The committee will uh, reconvene. Uh, Ms. Dean is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, Attorney General Barr. I'd like to return and describe or discuss some different issues regarding June 1st and Lafayette Square, where, as you know, peaceful protesters had gathered over days and hours to discuss civil rights, to discuss the heinous murder of George Floyd, and to call for equality and justice. When asked about the use of force displayed in the video against the protesters at Lafayette Square, you stated that your attitude was, quote, get it done. Let's look at what you got done. If you'll take a look at the timeline we have compiled, we see that you were spotted in Lafayette Square at 6.10 p.m. that Monday evening. The president was scheduled to speak in the Rose Garden at 6.15. The park police began to disperse protesters at roughly 6.33. President Trump started his speech at 6.43 and finished at 6.50. So by 7.01, when the president was ready to walk across the street to take a photo in front of St. John's Church, the square was cleared and ready for him to go. Am I correct? Yes. The timing is clear. Multiple local officials also confirmed the point of clearing the square. One safety official said it was as if the park police's plan to move the perim perimeter had been, quote, hurried up when the president needed to walk to church. And just today, Congress heard testimony from Adam DeMarco, a National Guard officer deployed at Lafayette Square, confirming that he expected the square to be cleared after the curfew, after 7 p.m. I'm sorry, who was that? Adam DeMarco, National Guard. In well, the afternoon, I, I didn't have a question for you, sir. In the afternoon, you told us that you learned of the president's interest in crossing the square to go to the church. Is it your opinion, Mr. Barr, that clearing protesters from Lafayette Square, which local officials were told to hurry up moments before the president's photo op with a borrowed Bible in front of a church, was coincidence? Is this timing coincidence? I believe it is. Yes, it's not coincidence. Post hoc ergo propter hoc. Uh, you know, is, is, is that what you're no, saying? You're in the Latin. Uh, in a related matter, when asked about the use of pepper bombs. It wasn't a coincidence in this set, if you would permit me, Congresswoman. Okay? As I said, I use the analogy of MacArthur at Leyte Golf. We heard okay? that. Thank yeah? you. I'll okay, so. Mr. Mr. Attorney General. He couldn't have walked. He said coincidence. Fine. We'll, we'll assume that that was all coincidence. In a related I, I've matter, already explained that it had been planned all Mr. day. Attorney General, mm -hmm. the time is mine. We've waited a long time for you to come here. The time is mine. You've waited to talk to me like this? You didn't need to wait when so long. When asked about the use of pepper bombs fired at Americans in Lafayette Square, you said, quote, no, there were no chemical irritants. Pepper spray is not a chemical irritant. It's not chemical, quote. Well, everything is chemical. I was referring to a dichotomy, Actually, a dichotomy the in these kinds of things between so, Mr. chemical Attorney compounds General, and naturally occurring Mr. substances. Attorney General, reclaiming my time, <laughs> there are rules by which we operate here. I would ask you to respect them. Take a look at the, the screen. I've placed on this screen for reference, as you are aware, how your department describes pepper balls used on Americans in Lafayette Square. A 2009 justice report noted that the pepper ball, quote, systems accuracy an accompanying blunt trauma impact made it an ideal chemical dispensing system. So while you, in a quote, said it's not chemical, you today confirm it is chemical, and you're aware of your department's policy, are you not? What, what policy? The one I've just provided to you. What does it say? What's the policy? Well, I showed it to you. Finally, whether or not you authorized it at the time, <laughs> Perhaps you weren't listening. I, I didn't see the policy. What, what was the policy Clearly in you there? Listening. Fine. Whether or not you authorized the use of pepper balls. What? The, 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 uh, I, I did not ask you a question yet, sir. What, 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 I ask you to please refrain from interrupting me. We watched horrifying videos played across the news and social media showing that these chemical irritants were used on protesters. So yes or no, and this is a yes or no, sir. Have you begun an investigation of the use of excessive force in Lafayette Square? Well, I think the IG is looking at, at everything related to, uh, you know, the anti-rioting. So the answer oper is yes, you are investigating. The, the IG is investigating it. I, it. Yeah. I will hope that he does not get fired. Tragically, what happened in Lafayette Square is no longer an isolated incident. 
use of chemical irritants has been used in more than 90 cities. My colleague showed you the video of the Navy vet being pepper sprayed and beaten, his bones broken. Whether or not you thought this was appropriate at the time, have you now called for law enforcement to stop using these chemical irritants on protesters? Yes or no? Pepper spray? Yes. Have no. You? No? I think it's a very important uh, non-lethal option. For protesters? No, for, Sir, for rioters. That was my question. For protesters. No, for rioters. Yes. Sir, America was founded on the principles of free speech. When, when people resist Excuse law enforcement, they're not peaceful. You're claiming my time. I'm surprised at your lack of respect for a member of Congress. The, uh, time, of the, general, the time of the gentlelady has expired. Ms. McCarcel Powell. Mr. Barr, good afternoon. I'm glad that you mentioned Latin America a little bit earlier. You know, many of my constituents that I represent in Florida fled to America from countries that used deadly force to stifle speech, and they used armed forces to suppress dissenting voices. They cherish our Constitution, as other Americans have done for generations, because of the incredible freedoms and rights that being an American citizen gives to all of us. It's extremely personal to me because you probably know that my roots are in Ecuador, but I live by the American Constitution. And it's true that those who weren't fortunate enough to always have these rights and freedoms sometimes cherish them even more than those who have always had them. When they see photos from Portland, they don't see the American ideal or the America that they know. They actually see and are reminded what they left behind. You would agree with me on that? Are you listening, Mr. Barr? Well, I wasn't sure. Take the a subject, look at this. I, who was the subject of that last sentence? Just, you know, when who you honor, see, who, look, who? look at these videos for one second. Yeah. We have seen violence in Venezuela at the hands of Maduro. Firing tear gas at protesters and using brutal tactics to crush demonstrations. That's what we see from dictators on both the left and the right. But it's hard to distinguish these photos from those events and from the videos that we've seen by US federal police in Portland tear gassing and breaking the bones of a peacefully protesting US Navy vet veteran. Very similar. So, Mr. Barr, how do you restore the confidence of my constituents in the values of this country when every night on television they're seeing these images of violence used against the peaceful protesters? We all denounce violence. How do you restore the trust in our democracy? I think that, I think that the, the force is being deployed against rioters or in situations where protesters are not following police directions. Most of the protests have been peaceful, Mr. Barr. You know that. You know that. You're just using that... language for political purposes, no, just like my colleagues that, across the aisle. Means. Most... Let me just go now to one of the most important topics facing our nation right now, health care. You know, in my district, we have close to 100,000 people that get their health insurance through the ACA. 19,000 of them are living with serious pre-existing conditions. And yet you are working to strip their health care at the worst possible moment when the coronavirus is killing thousands of people in my state. They in Miami-Dade County and in Monroe counties, counties that I represent, do you know how many people have died from COVID-19? No, I don't. 1,410 people. Mm -hmm. You were at the White House on March 23rd when President Trump said Governor DeSantis was doing an incredible job. Do you agree that Governor DeSantis is doing an incredible job? Well, I have no reason not to believe that. Well, Florida now has more cases than in China. Well, did and Cuomo, fact, did Cuomo do an incredible in Florida, job in New York? Unfortunately, and I'm not proud to say this, in Florida we have more cases than most countries combined around the world. So no, he is not doing an incredible job. You push states to open too soon. You threaten states with lawsuits. I didn't if ask they, states if to they open. Said, I didn't ask states to open. You threaten with lawsuits for those states for that church. wanted to have stay-at-home orders, Mr. For things Barr, like church. We have the facts. I'm going by the facts. Yeah, I'm just saying. And now the country, the United States of America, has more than 4.3 million COVID cases alone. You, you, Mr. Barr, and President Trump, working together, are letting my constituents down. 
and it's something that you are going to have to live with. What am I supposed to say to my constituents when they ask me if the government has done everything in its power to protect their loved ones from dying? You tell me, Mr. Barr, what am I supposed to tell them? I'm, I would tell them that managing this kind of thing requires a lot of uh, difficult choices and weighing different uh, consequences. I'm not going to lie. And that is, and that is I am not going to lie to my constituents. I am to, going to tell them that government. President that's Donald to Trump governors. and the Attorney General working together the are not following the, health guidelines. They are letting Americans die needlessly no, because of political reasons. In, in that is chairman, what I will in, tell them, in, Mr. In Barr. System, Thank you. And one last question, if I can. In our system, under the, oath, under oath, do you commit to not releasing any report by Mr. Durham before the November election? No. You don't commit to that. No. So you I won't go by careful. Department of Justice policy I know that, Justice that you won't policy. interfere in any the, political time, investigations before the November election. Not the time of the we're, we're not going to interfere. Inspired. In fact, Mr. I've Chairman. made it clear I'm not going to tolerate it. But under oath, you're saying that you do not commit to not releasing a report by Durham. I, I, I'm not going to. Uh, any report will will be, in my judgment, not one that is covered by the, the policy and it would disrupt the election. The time of the general I've already made it clear that neither you, you candidate is You would go against your own Department of Justice policy, Mr. Barton. Why don't you tell me what that policy is? Oh, I have is. it right here. Well, actually. Do you want me to repeat it for you? No, I know what the policy is. Time of the, yeah. gen the time of the okay. gentlelady. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I yield go ahead. Back. Go ahead. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. The gentlelady. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Lady. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Back. What? Purpose, does the gentleman see? Is it permissible for a member of this committee to accuse the sitting Attorney General of the United States of murder? Because that's what we just heard. Those words need to be struck from that, this record. This is outrageous. The members, the members control the time. Mr. Chairman. Mr. To say Mr. whatever Chairman. they want? Mr. What about Chairman. rules of decorum? Mr. 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 Chairman. Escobar Mr. Chairman, I, got, I actually have a clarification. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Escobar. Mr. Is, no, this, I, I just, Escobar is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Was the Escobar video circuit. played by the previous member, Mr. was that a video of things that Mr. happened in the United Escobar. States or in Venezuela. The I just want a clarification. Not, what was the video? The gentleman is not stating a cognizable point of order. Ms. Escobar is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Barr, the administration, against the constitutional text, historical precedent, and DOJ's own memo, is trying to exclude undocumented persons from the census, an action that harms American lives and immigrant communities, and American communities. Here's an example. Many American children are living with an undocumented parent or relative. This change in the census means that those children, American children, would receive less money for programs like the National School Lunch Program, Head Start, and or the State Children's Health Insurance Program. A simple yes or no, please, Mr. Barr. Are you comfortable with a decision that would punish American children and immigrant communities in this way? I don't make the policy. I provide legal advice on legal issues. So okay. as both to this issue and the issue of the Thank ACA, you, the question presented to the ACA, department Mr. is Barr, the law. I'm claiming my time, sir. Mr. Barr, a simple yes or no. Does the Constitution say that only citizens should be counted in the census? No. Correct. It does not. In fact, the framers of the 14th Amendment explicitly confronted this question, and it provides that persons in each state be counted. I'll move on. Well, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have other, confronted sir, no it because there were no illegal yet, aliens. Among many I'm, other things, I'm alarmed by your department's refusal to comply with and implement key Supreme Court rulings. On June 18th of this year, the Supreme Court, in an opinion authored by Chief Justice Roberts, ruled that the Trump administration's attempt to rescind DACA was arbitrary and capricious and required the administration to process new DACA applications. Despite the Supreme Court's ruling, zero DACA applications have been processed. That's not the only Supreme Court decision your administration has ignored. In 2017, your department issued a memo stating that transgender workers were not protected by civil rights laws. The Supreme Court struck that down, too. No, I'm in sorry. Both, in both what we had said was the no 64 Act Excuse did not me. extend to... Reclaiming my time, sir. In both DACA, the DACA and transgender decisions, your department has yet to comply. Yes or no? Will the department implement the Supreme Court's DACA and transgender rulings? I, yes, I think we are. The DACA ruling? 
Yes. You are, you, you are now processing DACA applications? I think what we're trying to do now is, is restore the administrative process. And sir, I think okay, DHS I has put out a rule. I, I think DHS time. put out a rule Thank today. Thank you, sir. Sir, earlier you testified. At least that's what I was told. You testified that you discuss the president's reelection campaign with him. Does the president tell you what he thinks the winning issues for him would be in his reelection? I'm not going to discuss my, my discussions with the president. That's, it's, a, it's a very, it's, I'm not asking you to divulge anything private or classified. Well, I, I think my Does discussions the with the president are, are confidential. Okay. Have you but it shouldn't surprise you at an election year, the topic of the election comes up. Well, it surprises me that the DOJ has become so politicized. Oh, That's God. what surprises me. <laughs> Sir, have you and the president ever discussed the fact that anti-immigrant and anti-LGBTQ policies excite his base? No. You've never had that conversation? No. He's never told you that his anti-immigrant policies, his anti-LGBTQ policies gin up his base? I haven't discussed that with him, but I assume the immigration, uh, you know, I think a lot of his base does, does care about immigration policy. Does that motivate some of the work that you do? What, like what work? Well, for example, the, your enthusiasm for... That position was taken on, on the transgender that you're talking about was taken before I arrived in that litigation, I believe. And you can reverse it any day. And my question was whether you... No, it was a legal question it. as to whether the 64 Act extended to transgender. I think it was... I'm running out of time, sir. One more question. You keep telling us that you're not aware of the president's tweets. Are you aware that your department has stated that the president's tweets are official White House statements? No, I wasn't. Okay. I don't pay attention so to the tweets to unless they're brought to my attention. Okay, Mr. Barr, thank you so much for being here today. I, I want to remind you of something uh, you probably don't remember. But some months ago, you actually were outside my office. You were coming out of my neighbor, Doug Collins' office. I tapped you on the shoulder, and in a friendly reminder, I handed you a copy of the Constitution, and I asked you to please help us defend the Constitution. There's nothing more dangerous to our republic than an attorney general who refuses to uphold his oath, refuses to uphold and defend the Constitution, and swears allegiance to just one person, Donald Trump. Now, I, Sadly, that's where we are today. My loyalty is the uh, Mr. Constitution. Chairman, I yield back. That's why I, I came into government. The lady yields The lady back. just accused him of General, not adhering to his General oath lady, of office. Let him lady, talk. General, Holy. You, the, she lady, just accused the Attorney General of the United States was, not adhering to his oath. The Let the gentleman speak. Will, Even worse. The gentleman will suspend. The gentlelady <laughs> yields back. The ranking member asks whether the video shown by the gentlelady from Florida took place in the U.S. or in Ecuador. No, Venezuela. And that, sir, it, in the U.S. or Venezuela. And that, sir, is precisely the point. This concludes no, no, no. the hearing. She was, she was we thank it, the Attorney General. My point was, it was Venezuela. We thank the Attorney General for Ms. participating without, all, without objection. All members will have five legislative days to submit additional written records for the witnesses or additional materials for the record. Without objection, the hearing is adjourned. Thank you.